In this tutorial we're going to show you how to create job template files and these are really useful in two case scenarios. For example, if you commonly work with different sheet thicknesses, you can save these as templates to open without having to make any adjustments to the job setup form. And another example could be if you were creating a job that is interchangeable with each customer order and that could be set up as a template where you would only need to change the customizable parts. And so we're going to look at an example of both of these throughout this video. So let's go to file and close. So let's look at creating our new file to create our first template. So the first one I want to make is a single sided job with a width of 24 inches, a height of 24 inches and a thickness of 0.25. If you recall, I mentioned I wanted several sheets of MDF and one of the uh, measurements was to have it as a quarter inch thick, which is this value here. Material surface as a Z0 position X, Y, D in the bottom left. So let's click OK and let's save out this now as a template. So this is my worksheet ready to go or effectively my MDF sheet. So file, save as template. And I can save it to my sheets folder. So nice and obvious as to where it is for my jobs. So I'm going to call this one MDF 025 as in quarter inch or quarter inch uh, thick material. And I can click save and that's my template now saved there ready to use. In fact, if I bring up my folder, you'll notice where I saved it to, it saved it as MDF 025. And you can see it's a CRV template file or a CRV T file, which means it's a template file. Let's just minimize that. And so now what we can do is have a look at making some edits to this current worksheet or to this job template. And then what I can do is make some edits to this and then I can save it out as a normal .crv file. But we'll look at that in a little bit. First, we're going to set up our job templates for the other thicknesses that we have for the MDF. So we've got our quarter inch. We need half inch, three quarter inch and an inch. So how do we do that? Come up to set uh, job dimensions. And what we can do is change this to 0.5, so half an inch, OK, file, save as template, and then we can save this one as MDF05, and it'll save as, as a .crv uh, t file, so it'll save as a, and we'll call this one MDF05, which is half an inch, so then it'll be uh, saved as a a vcarve template file or a .crvt file. Then we'll come back in, do our three quarter inch. So 0.75, OK, file, save as template. And this time 0.75. And then finally we'll do our one inch. So just one in here, OK. And then as usual file, save as template. And then we've got MDF1. And I can see we've got all of our different thicknesses ready to go. So now that I have four common use sheet sizes saved out as templates, how do we actually work on them for our brand new job? Well, what we want to do is go up to File and Close, and then what we're going to do is come up to this option here to open new file from templates. So let's click on that, and you notice it's opened up the four templates that we had saved earlier. Now in this case, I've got an order come in for a quarter inch MDF sheet from a customer, so I'm going to double click on this one. This will open up my template and I'm happy with these settings. I can click OK and then I can come up to this tool here to import a bitmap or vectors into my current job. So I can bring in my customer's vectors from his order file. So I can click that and click on open. And now it's brought in the customer's vectors so I can now get these ready to toolpath. So I can get these ready for machining. Then what we can also do is save this file as a standard CRV file as we mentioned earlier. So we can come up to file save as and then what we can actually do is save this in our orders folder. And I'm going to call this one PO Smith. So private order for Smith 2727. So I know this is a private order for my customer. And I can save that now. It's saved separately to my template file. So let's just take a look at the original templates folder because you can see that my templates have not been overwritten because the template file is separate to the .crv file that we just saved. So my templates are still ready for use later if I need to use them for any other orders or jobs. And I can show you that the order was put into this folder. So it's a CRV file. So that was a file we just saved and that is ready for use later if we need to reuse it, make a cut again, or if we want to edit that file at a later point. Now let's say you wanted to make an edit to your template file. It's really easy to do. You just come up to File and Close. And then we're going to come up to New File from Template. And what we're going to do is open up our MDF quarter inch thick material or template and open that up. 
and you'll see that the settings are the same as before but this time I want to include some dowel holes on my template ready to go so if I come to my draw circle tool I want it to be 0.25 inches in diameter I can pop my dowel holes where I need them in this case in the corners and then when I'm happy with that I can come up to file save as template and now we can just simply overwrite the old one by clicking on it using that same name click save ask you if you want to overwrite it yes I do in this case and now that's available for me to use in future with the dowel holes already available on that template so now let's have a look at another example where templates can be really useful so we'll go to file and close and we're going to go to open an existing file and you'll notice here I've got this folder with kids bedroom signs and I've got this file here called initial concept so let's open that up and you'll see if we pop over to the 3d view and effectively I've got an idea for a business that I want to work on and that's creating signs for kids bedroom doors and so the idea is that I can just take this file and swap out the interchangeable parts so for example uh, the child's name along with the artwork so we've just got the vectors here to begin with and you can see all of our vectors are organized on two layers and we're going to make use of how we can use the automatic vector selection option within our toolpath form for the software to pull up the vectors from the associated layers in order for us to run the toolpath and then ultimately we will save this out as a template and then open it back up again to then change out the name and the artwork uh, so it's just simply a case of being able to simply recalculate our tool pass to create a brand new project rather than having to create a whole new one from the start so first thing we need to do is switch over to the toolpath uh, tab so if we come to the top left here and click on this button here to switch us over so the first toolpath we're going to look at is the pocket toolpath now I want to cut down 0.2 inches and I want to actually select two tools because I want to have a clearance pass so the first uh, tool to clear the majority of the material away and then the second smaller tool to clean up the areas that the larger tool could not now crucially what we're going to use is the vector selection down here so if we click on this this will open up the vector selector uh, form where we're able to specify various fields to tell the software which vectors we need to pull out from the uh, software based on the criteria within this form so in this case we're going to select all close vectors and then from the selected layers uh, so in this case we want the artwork the name and the inner border and we also want to make sure that we check this box here because we want to associate these vectors with this toolpath and you'll notice that when I check these uh, options here that it highlights those vectors in the background to show you that they are the ones selected so I'm happy with that I'm going to click close so I've got my uh, vectors associated with this toolpath I can now click calculate and now we can have a look at previewing our toolpath but before I do I'm going to change the global fill color so we can see what the toolpath looks like and I'll change it to a blue and with my first uh, toolpath selected I'm going to click preview select the toolpath and this is the larger tool now clearing away the majority of the material that the larger tool can feasibly fit into so it clears away the majority of the material but you can see some areas that it couldn't quite get into with the text for example and this is where the smaller tool comes in so now we'll go to the next toolpath preview that one and you can see how that smaller tool cleans up those areas and gets into those areas where the larger tool uh, could not so now with our pocket completed let's have a look at doing the outer border and we need to do that by turning on our vectors in the 3d view so let's click this button up here here's the vectors in the 3d view close out this preview come up to the profile toolpath and we're not going to select the vector over here we're going to use a select the selector down here the vector selection tool and i want to cut through my material all the way through so i can put in here z equals and it will populate this value based on the thickness of our worksheet using quarter inch end mill i'm going to cut outside of that line and as i said we're going to use a selector so let's go into that form and we want all the closed vectors that are not the artwork name or in a border we want the outer border and you can now see it selected with the dashed line there in the background associate that with the toolpath click close click calculate and now let's have a look at what that profile looks like so let's preview that selected toolpath and now let's cut that out and what we can do is if we double left mouse click the waste material that is now gone and that is our sign ready to go so now with our sign completed we can look at saving this out as a template and it will save that template out with these toolpaths over here so if we go up to file save as template and I'm going to put this one into my kids bedroom signs 
folder and I'm going to call this one bedroom sign. So that template is now saved for future use. So when I load that up, the toolpath will be in uh, that particular template. And with that, we can also now close our file. So we'll go to File and Close. You notice I get an option to uh, save the file. In this case, I don't want to because I've already saved it as a template. So I'm just going to close that down. And now, let's say I put that sign on social media and someone's got in touch to say that they'd love to have a similar sign for their daughter, Molly. Uh, but in this case, they want it to be something a bit more appropriate for Molly's tastes. Well, what we can actually do is open up our template. So if we go to a new, a new file from template, and if we choose our bedroom sign, you'll notice it populates it currently with the Rex's room uh, design, but we can have a look at now editing that for something more appropriate for Molly. So the first thing we'll do is change the text. So let's go to Rex, let's select that and go to the text tool. Um, we're just going to change this to Molly's. And in fact, let's make that all capitals so it's nice and clear for Molly. And so now the text has been changed. And Molly isn't really the biggest fan of dinosaurs, so I'm going to get rid of the dinosaur here, just highlight that, click delete, and I can bring in uh, a new set of vectors for Molly that's more appropriate. So in this case, if I go to Import Bitmap or Vectors tool, I'm going to choose the flower file here. And that brings in a flower file for me to uh, put onto this design. So I'm going to put it roughly central there. And then I'm going to right mouse click and I'm going to move this to a layer. I'm going to move this to the layer that is called artwork because if you remember, our toolpaths are associated with our layers or our layers are associated with our toolpaths. So we need to make sure that when we go to recalculate uh, our toolpaths that the appropriate vectors are on the correct layers. And now that that's on that layer, we can have a look at our layers tab. So we come to the top here, you notice that we have the outer border, the artwork, the name, the inner border, and I don't need uh, the EPS file anymore, so I can just get rid of that layer, delete this, and delete this. And now we can have a look at the toolpath. So we we'll pop over to the toolpath menu, and we're just going to click on uh, recalculate toolpath. So this icon just here. And it's now recalculated all the toolpaths. You can see it's applied it to our current design. We're going to go look at previewing that toolpath as well. I'm going to change the global color to something like purple. And let's preview all the toolpaths to have a look at what this new sign looks like. And you can see all of our changes are taking effect because we associated that flower to that artwork layer. And of course, we changed the name on the text layer. So that's all been. Uh, amended and you can see it's turned out great. So you can see how quick and easy that was to amend the file. So you can see how quickly you can change these using a template. And now what you can actually do is go to File, Save As, and you can save this one as Molly. So you now have your Molly file saved separately. And this doesn't affect your template because we saved this as a CRV file. We didn't save this as a new template. So the original template is completely intact and you have the CRV file if you need to cut another one or if you want to make any edits to it in future. But for now, we're just going to go to File and Close. So let's say another order popped in and we need to make a new file. So we'll go to New File from Template and again, we'll choose our bedroom sign and we'll see how quick and easy it is to make an edit to this one. So let's pop over to our 3D view, click OK. And this time we've got an order for a, another child. So it's going to change the name here to Jojo. So Jojo isn't exactly a big fan of dinosaurs either, so we're just going to get rid of the dinosaur. We can get rid of that one, delete that. We'll bring in a different design. So in this case, let's go for a rocket. And what we're going to do is pop that over here, snap that there, and we're going to just use the rotation handle to uh, rotate this. Maybe put the rocket at an angle there. I think that looks quite good. Move it up just a little bit. And then what we need to do, as before, right mouse click, we want to move that to the layer, which is the artwork. And then again, we've got our layers here. So we've got the inner border, the name, the artwork, and the outer border. We don't need this layer anymore, so we can right click, delete. That's all gone. And now we can have a look at toolpathing it. So let's pop over to the toolpath menu. We can uh, click recalculate toolpath. And because we've associated that rocket, um, artwork to the artwork layer. It's 
taken that into account. And because we've got Jojo now on our name layer, that's also taken into account. So let's look at the preview for it. We'll change the fill color to green this time. And let's have a look at what that looks like. And you can see just how quickly we managed to make a new file using a template. So you can really see how powerful this feature is. And there's our sign ready for Jojo. And now, as before, we can come to file, save as, let's call this one Jojo. We can save that file. And that brings us to the end of our tutorial on how to use job templates. And hopefully that demonstrates the efficient ways of working with job templates to help create uh, repeatable jobs and do them quickly without running the risk of overwriting your original data. And of course, we look forward to seeing you in the next video.